and welcome to another episode of the in news series i am pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic because we all like to go out and eat or dine or lunch somewhere and that is a very exciting thing for us so those of you who are preparing for upsc this is going to be important for you from the perspective of gs mains paper 3 and also 2 and from the perspective of prelims facts are going to be important but if you even if you're not preparing for the upsc examination you have to know things about what you pay for so that is why we are going to discuss about service charges at the restaurant so these are the many topics that we are going to discuss let us first of all know about why is it in the news so new guidelines have been promoted by the consumer protection authority central consumer protection authority in the light of many complaints that were coming that restaurants are charging them with the service charge although in 2017 the guidelines were provided for the restaurants not to charge service charges as it is not mandatory but it is flexible when it comes to if you are going to provide a tip to the waiter or the service provider the service waiter you can do so but it is not mandatory so even after 2017 the guidelines failed to actually make a very hard impact so first of all let us talk about the central consumer protection authority it came into existence under section 10 clause 1 of the consumer protection act of 2019 although it was established in 2020 the main aim is to protect the rights of the consumers by cracking down on unfair trade practices and service charge uh, making them mandatory in the sense not making the consumers aware that service charges are actually not mandatory you can have a say if you do not want to pay so that's an unfair trade practice false and misleading advertisement are also one of the centers where uh, central consumer price uh, sorry protection uh, authority makes a charge at also the headquarters of it is of course in the national capital region of delhi but the central government can establish regional offices anywhere else as well in addition to the headquarters now what are the functions apart from many functions the basic functions that the authority has the uh, the many other ones which might escape your remembrance are if the authority finds that any goods are dangerous then they can recall the goods or withdrawal of services and then pass an order for refund as well for the prices of the goods or services that were recalled they can also impose a penalty of rupees 10 lakh with a jail term of up to 2 years on the manufacturer or the endorser the manufacturer who is making the product endorser who is actually promoting the product of false and misleading advertisements if there are certain false or misleading advertisement the penalty may go up to rupees 50 lakh as well so 10 to 50 lakh is the bracket and the imprisonment years are 5 years for every subsequent offense if the manufacturer or the endorser are failing to actually redress whatever concerns the authority has subsequently they are doing it again and again then this will be the punishment moving forward if we talk about the composition the composition consists of a chairperson and two other commissioners as members there is also an investigation wing of the authority which is headed by the director general and district collectors will too have a part and a and powers to investigate complaints under the particular acts of 2019 moving on if we talk about the service charge in addition to many components of the bill that you get when you dine or lunch at a restaurant service charge is basically a tip you can say it is a kind of tip but tip is something that we think of paying uh, from our own pocket when we finish the meal and this is very voluntary in nature i can tip 100 200 300 depending upon the place i am dining at and the kind of service i am getting but the service charge is something that is reflected on the bill if it is added upon and you paid it in full then that is actually not mandatory that's not mandatory let us know about the food charge uh, sorry the components of the bill 
Now this is something that I have attached before GST and after GST. Before GST when we used to lunch at the restaurants, uh, apart from the food bill that is reflected on the menu, we also had food taxable VAT, beverage taxable VAT. This is service tax, this is another thing and this is service charge. So service charge is something that is not mandatory while service tax basically before GST it was mandatory. Then comes the GST. What happens after that? The food price that is reflected on the menu plus the state GST and center GST and then it becomes so less. So you see that many taxes were subsumed by the GST and you see that service tax and food taxable VAT, uh, services tax, beverage tax, food taxable tax, these were basically taken away by GST. Whereas this particular bill shows you apart from the food charges, we also have here service charge. This is 280 upon the whatever uh, the service charge can range from 5 to 15 percent and that depends on the policy of the restaurant. So this particular service charge is not at all mandatory, you can refuse to pay it. Okay, so food charge, addition of service charge, 5% GST on this amount, whatever the amount is there with respect to the bill and this is for all kinds of standalone restaurants, the standalone restaurants which are working on their own without being inside any area such as 5 star hotels. If they are located inside a hotel where the room rate is upward, 7500, these are basically 5 star hotels, then the GST will be 18%. Okay, now the question arises. If service charge is being charged, where does the fund go? The restaurant says that it can be used for many things, such as first, it can provide be provided as a fund for the people who are working in the restaurant and help in their good and bad times with that fund that they make from service charge. Secondly, it can also be an incentive to the people who are attending to the table. Table number 8 has particular set of people that are attending to. So it's kind of a tip for them. Now the thing is that we do pay tip to the waiters. But the backside uh, kitchen ones, they do not get the incentive for providing us the food. So this is what the restaurants say. Also, if we add the service charge to the food menu and the billing amount comes as X, then a percentage of it also goes to the uh, government revenue in form of GST. These were the things that were said by the restaurants. Now background in background I would like to say that this matter had come up in 2016 and 17. In 2017 guidelines were provided for service charge but it was said that of course it is not mandatory but the enforcement of these guidelines were not appropriate. And restaurants, several restaurants were making service charge binding on their patrons, binding on their customers. If a person is not aware that they have to pay the service charge or not, they will end up paying it thinking that it is mandatory. So, customer awareness was not there. And uh, exploiting this vulnerability of the customer, restaurants were having their go. Now, guidelines on fair trade practices related to charging of service charge from consumers and hotels by hotels and restaurants, it was said that look you are already getting your service charge in the food and beverage menu rupees because a 10 rupee maggie that we eat uh, sorry it might have changed i haven't, haven't had maggie since a very long time but i think it's uh, 11 12 something like that so a uh, 12 rupee maggie or 11 rupee maggie that we make at home by sprinkling some kind of cheese or something like that it wouldn't cost more than 30 rupees right but in big restaurants if you go it goes like 60 rupees 70 rupees so you are already getting your service charge in that particular uh, menu that you have given for the customers to look at so why do you need to have a service charge that you add on top of that menu that was said in these guidelines and the issue still um, the restaurants were like okay it is not either if you think from the perspective of restaurants they are making it visible enough for the consumers to pay but they are saying that it is not mandatory, although it is not illegal to have service charge. So the issue comes here that the default billing option, whenever we get the bill, 
we have that service charge reflected and in that bill and that is the problem because consumers might not be aware of that and they might end up get giving that money to the restaurant also because there is no transparency as to where this charge goes as it is not mandatory then it wouldn't be mandatory for the uh, consume uh, for the restaurants to show to the consumers that we have so much transparency or to the government that we have so much transparency that this particular fund is being built and it is going to the right place also uh, public embarrassment whenever a person says that i do not want to pay the service charge then the onus comes on that consumer that they have to explain it to the management of the restaurant that why they are not paying it so it results in public embarrassment and also spoil their dining experience okay so uh, what are the guidelines let's go through them one by one no hotel or restaurant shall add service charge automatically or by default in the bill service charge shall not be collected from consumers by any other name it doesn't mean that we are going to have another name for service charge no hotel or restaurant shall force a consumer to pay service charge and shall clearly inform the consumer that service charge is voluntary optional and at consumer's discretion this is the best one no restriction on entry or provision of, of services based on collection of service charge shall be imposed on consumers and service charge shall not be collected by adding it along with the food bill and levying gst on the total amount so as a consumer what can you do if you do not want to pay the service charge you can make a polite request to the hotel or restaurant to remove that if they are not if they do not seem to agree to you then you can call on the national consumer helpline it works as an alternate dispute redressal mecha uh, mechanism which is pre litigation that means uh, it's not court like but if you want to move to the court before that you can talk to the national consumer helpline which is the number is 1915 okay here it is or on the nch mobile app and you can also lodge your complaint by using to the consumer commission at ek dakhi portal and this is the link okay you can also submit this is the fourth step you can submit a complaint to the district collector of that particular district and a consumer can also complain directly to the ccpa by sending an email to the given link okay so what is the conclusion in conclusion it is said why not increase the wages of your of the people who are working at your restaurant first second consumer should be made aware if a person wants to pay the service charge they will pay if they do not it's not mandatory they are already paying hefty amounts at restaurant and better transparency should be built so that a consumer is socially and morally obligated to pay the service charge if transparency will be built around the funds how are they used okay now let us look at our question the central consumer protection authority has been established under which section of the consumer protection act of 2019 these are the given options you have to answer them correctly okay this question correctly and if you have answered my last question please stay i am going to take your names if you haven't you can move on to the next thing we'll see you again do answer this question okay uh, so the people who have answered the last question correctly the last question which i asked on the in new series so i got approximately more than 50 comments on that i'm just going to go through them to take the names okay if i miss your name i'm really sorry so yes saroj has answered it correctly both the options were correct okay both the statements were correct so see uh, abhay has answered it correctly kiran bhai has answered it correctly then uh, nandish has answered it correctly Ladakh Adventures has answered it correctly. Alok Shukla has answered it correctly. Janvi has answered it correctly. Then, um, okay, Gayatri says that we provide the PDF for that. See, it's not a problem that we provide a PDF or not. There are certain edition that I do in the segment itself. Also, the lethargy that surrounds the PDF is that once you get the PDF, you will think that I will read it some day else, and that never happens. So actively listen. This is going to help you a lot. Gayatri answered it correctly. Puneet, uh, then Agath. I cannot pronounce this name because there are no spaces. But you have answered it correctly. The name is there, and seven two seven is there. Keshav has answered it correctly. Ritu Parna Sarkar has answered it correctly. Shri Pranya has answered it correctly. Gautam, Sudarshana, 
uh, then Mini has answered it correctly. Chitta, Chitirak has answered it correctly. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce it correctly. Kushbu and zero degree Arya, they have answered it correctly. Akash Deep, Tanbir, Dinesh, Aditya Birla, JB, Mangal. And uh, yes, many other people have answered it correctly. Alok has answered it correctly. Payal has answered it correctly. Thank you so much. And there, there is one Pallavi Jangir. Thank you so much. I, I see that you are a regular viewer of the channel. Thank you so much. And uh, there is a question with respect to English that has been answered in the comment segment itself. So thank you so much for watching. We shall meet again.